What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rovardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And we told you so. We told you guys Daniel Jones was going to bounce back at today's practice, and he absolutely did exactly that. He had about 15 good practices in a row. Maybe it was somewhere between 10 and 15. And then he finally had one bad practice as soon as the Giants finally practiced against the Lions. And the whole NFL media world decided to blow up and make a huge to-do about it for no good reason. What does he do the very next day? He fires back and he has a damn good practice day, as Alex and I said in yesterday's episode, that he would. So, today we're going to go ahead and talk about this final joint practice between the Giants and the Lions. They will be facing off on Friday night for the first preseason game of the season. Let's freaking go. Giants football is nearly back, but until then, we're just going to keep talking about the little practices and the other things that the Giants do in between these games. So, we're going to dive into all that, but before we do, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic down below below in the comment section. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review and go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? What are your thoughts on Daniel Jones bouncing back in today's practice? Guys, I mean, if you watched yesterday's episode, you know something very obvious. Um, I We literally called this. This was yesterday's outrage over Dan Jones performing poorly. And let me just get, thing, get one thing out of the way. It's freaking practice. If he plays well, great. If he plays bad, whatever. You know, it doesn't mean anything. It's, you know, you want to see it in the games. Of course, you want to see your players playing well during practice, but does it really matter? No. How many times have we seen players play well in practice and suck in games? Like, there's always these camp bodies that have, like, ridiculous off seasons and they end up doing nothing. So, um, I'm, I'm Obviously, Daniel Jones having a good day is definitely an indicator that he's in flow. The offense is looking a little bit better, and we're going to kind of talk about that. Obviously, the offense was really, really good today. It was red hot. So the Giants dominated, like red zone dominated, and and they just were just streamlining efficiency. And, you know, I'll I'll, I'll read you guys off some of the top plays from today um, because there's a lot of them. So the first team period featured seven-on-seven drills inside the red zone. Daniel Jones got things started when he connected with – uh, tight end Darren Waller, who made a contested catch over the middle for the first touchdown of the day. So that's touchdown number one. I think he had five, if I'm not mistaken. He also found running back Saquon Barkley for a touchdown from the five-yard line later in that period. A few days later, the offense lined up on the goal line, and what do you believe? Jones hit wide receiver Cole Beasley for another score. Tyrod Taylor even dest- destroyed the Lions today. I don't even know what the hell. The Lions did not show up. Um, I mean, Tyrod Taylor had two touchdown passes in 7v7s to one to tight end uh, Tommy Sweeney. And then... You know who actually had a really good day? Darius Slayton. So shout out to Drew Lieberman, our, our guy. Uh, I talked to him a couple days ago about Darius Slayton kind of taking a big step forward and really falling through in the catches and not dropping the ball and going at 100%. Two big plays today. And Darius Slayton could be in line to be actually like one of our best players this year um, if he stays healthy and you know, doesn't drop the football, which we think he can do. Uh, he's going to be really good for the Giants in 2023. I, I'm, I'm kind of buying into the hype right now. Um, he had that one, that one throw that was gorgeous. And, and you want to know something about that throw. I want to know who made a really, really nice block. Our rookie center, John Michael Schmitz. He allowed Daniel Jones to step up into the pocket. And Jones, you know, this is the thing that I've been noticing from him. He's using the different arm angles. You know, you watch Patrick Mahomes throwing it on sidearm and throwing it this way and that way. We've seen da- uh, Daniel Jones do that a couple of times. But I think that Brian Dable and Mike Kafka are starting to give him the leniency, give him the, the creativity to say, like, okay, like, go and do that. Like, go sling the rock. Go use the arm angles. Throw it sideways. If you can get around a defender, do what you got to do. Throw Go on the run, you know, have fun. Like it's a game. Have fun doing it and do it at a high level. You know, follow your fundamentals and your basics. But at this at the same time, like to be a great football player in the NFL, you have to bring another element to your game. You can't be like a static player anymore. Um, you can't just sit there unless you're Tom Brady and you know what the other team is doing because you're that freaking smart and you just under the understand the game at a level that's like Albert Einstein wouldn't even be able to compare. You know what I mean? Like you you just can't mimic that level of that that style of quarterbacking you need to have like this um unbelievable athletic profile mixed in with like you know just being creative and and you know attacking and using your strengths um so Slayton did that to or rather Daniel Jones did that today when he showed off that arm and you know that little slot that little sidearm throw um through like 30 yards downfield um it, it was a beautiful throw Darius Slayton right in the corner came down got two feet in bounds um it was beautiful so you'd love to see that Slayton had I think two touchdown passes as I said before also Paris Campbell had two touchdowns from Jones both inside the five yard line that's interesting you know Daniel Jones you know is are they going to be using Paris Campbell 
a lot more in the red zone this year. Um, I didn't really anticipate him being involved that way because he had a career high three touchdowns. But that speed, I mean, you look at what the Chiefs do. Like they have those kind of delayed routes that like break off at the end. Um, those kind of like you're running parallel to the actual um, goal line. Maybe Paris Campbell can actually be a, an asset there. Maybe he can actually produce some touchdowns and some scores. I mean, think about this. We always talked about those like uh, like you know Dave Gettleman wanted like Kyle Rudolph, like these six foot seven receivers. I think last year, like, most of our receivers were smaller. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure, like, you know, Wandale had that one touchdown. Um, I think we had a couple touchdowns. I mean, Hodgins, he's a bit of a bigger guy. But, um, you know, the routes were there. Like, the routes are kind of designed for smaller receivers. But he was – he's such a good – you know, he has such good hands and he, um, some good tenacity that I was able to punch him in. So, you know, looking at what the Giants did in the red zone today, you know, what kind of gets you excited about what they're doing for the future? I think, obviously, they're not going to be showing their whole playbook. We're seeing kind of baseline stuff here. But – it was nice to see Daniel Jones bounce back with a big day. And some of these guys just, you know, they're putting it on the field, man. Saquon, Paris Campbell, Darius Slayton, even Cole Beasley had a score. Um, it's great to see everybody getting involved. It is great to see everybody getting involved. And I will say, when it comes to the red zone offense, first of all, the Giants were pretty damn good in the red zone last year. The stats back that up. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head. But I do know that the Giants did have a very high conversion rate when they were in the red zone. They very seldom settled for field goals when they got down in the red zone. Very often did punch it in for six points. Now, I know that the Giants didn't have that many trips to the red zone. But when they were there, super efficient. Usually got six points out of the trip. So, that's something to take note of here as we go into the second season with Brian Dable's offense, with Mike Kafka's offense, as Daniel Jones only gets more comfortable. They should only be even better in the red zone, especially because they have more weapons. Now, everyone loves to point to Darren Waller as being the big red zone acquisition for this team, and I actually see it the opposite way. A lot of people like to say you got a big six foot six tight end you can just throw it up to. No, that is not how the New York Giants are looking at this. That's not what Brian Dable and Mike Kafka are planning for their red zone offense. In fact, all of those other players that you guys write off on being red zone threats, those shifty, small slot receivers, those are the red zone guys because the Giants don't want to leave things up to chance, don't want to throw those 50-50 balls up to Darren Waller in the back of the end zone. First of all, that creates wear and tear for Darren Waller. He can better use his skill set elsewhere. Second of all, you're throwing up a 50-50 ball. That means your chances are only 50-50. Go look at, as Alex just mentioned, what the Chiefs do when they're in the red zone. How about even, I hate to say his name, but Kadarius Tony scoring a touchdown in the Super Bowl? I could have scored that touchdown. You listening to this, you probably could have scored that touchdown because all that the Chiefs did was put him in motion, stacked him up, then snapped the ball. So he had a five-yard buffer. He walked into the end zone. That's what the Giants are going to start doing going forward because they have these very shifty receivers that can make those quick bursts in space catch the ball, walk into the end zone. That's why Sterling Shepard is still on this roster. That's why Cole Beasley was added to this roster. That's why Jamie Crowder is still on this roster. That's what you can expect to see from the Giants' red zone offense. And that's what we are seeing. That's why Paris Campbell keeps scoring touchdowns in the red zone at Giants practice. He's, sh he's shifty. He's short, but he can just catch the ball, turn up field, accelerate five yards, and he's in the end zone. So that's what you guys could expect from the Giants' red zone offense. Is that to say that Darren Waller's not going to get into the end zone when they're in the red zone? No, it's not to say that because he's also a damn good route runner. And yes, he does have his size, which is an advantage for him. Darren Waller's going to score a lot of touchdowns this year if he stays healthy. He's going to be a threat from anywhere on the field. But when the Giants are down on that five-yard line or the goal line and they don't feel like they can run it in, Saquon Barkley maybe is getting a little bit trapped behind the line of scrimmage or they're going up against a really heavy run defense they're going to go ahead and use those shifty receivers that they have break open walk their way into the end zone it's that easy so that's what i'm excited about with this giants red zone offense but the other part of it that i want to dive into alex is the fact that Daniel Jones is showing that he's getting better and better off script. And that includes in the red zone. So last year, towards the end of the season, once Isaiah Hodgins got on the scene, that's when we, re we really started to see this out of Daniel Jones. I remember that touchdown against the Indianapolis Colts, right? When Daniel Jones rolled out, waited, and then he hit Hodgins, who just dove in for the touchdown. That was because of two things. One, Daniel Jones having the ability to extend the play, scramble, and then make a play off script. Number two, Isaiah Hodgins having really good speed spatial awareness, being able to sit down in the comfortable part of the zone and fall forward into the end zone. So once we go into this upcoming season, the Giants now have Daniel Jones more confident than ever. That touchdown pass that you referenced that he threw to Darius Slayton today, he was off script. He was moving right, throwing left. I mean, it was low-key, like, regular season, he makes that throw. We're comparing him to Patrick Mahomes on that pass. It was a great throw. It really was. Rolling right, throwing left. It's very d difficult to do. Daniel Jones just ripped that against the Lions in today's practice. Now, they also had Darius Slayton go up there and make a great catch. We just talked about him. Super excited about him. I really do think he's going to be the wide receiver one in this offense opposite of... Um, 
Darren Waller, who, yes, is probably going to be the wide receiver one production, but he's a tight end. So wide receiver-wise, Darius Slayton, I'm expecting a big year from. But again, I really love the fact that we're seeing Daniel Jones make these throws from off-platform, off-script, make these throws into the end zone. And you're seeing a lot of these other shifty wide receivers get open by just finding open space and then running their way into the end zone, which, again, is what you see from the Chiefs, which is what you saw from Isaiah Hodgins last year, which is why he was so effective. And I think that's really going to help the Giants take their red zone offense to the next level. But another thing, Alex, you mentioned that John Michael Schmitz I just got to say I am so thrilled about this kid he is the New York Giants starting center locked in day one honestly yes he needs to play in the preseason because he's a rookie he needs some extra playing time get a little extra practice in there but I don't think he needs to play too much I'm ready to just see this kid in the regular season he seems ready to me I think John Michael Schmitz what a draft pick in the second round and he's just going to go out there and continue to be a great player like he was throughout his collegiate career and I think that this is going to be far and away the best center that Daniel Jones has played with throughout his NFL career. I mean, you think about that, Alex. I just, I got to bring this up again. Daniel Jones has had how many centers throughout his career so far? He's had a different starter every single year. He's going into his fifth year, and there's been a rotation at center in at least three of those years. I think he's caught snaps from seven different centers in four years. Uh, five if you include John Michael Schmitz. I don't know. It's pretty insane to me how many centers the Giants have had. But one of the things that we can be excited about is a little bit more continuity on this offensive line, right, Alex? So, you know, when you're looking at the offensive line, we're hearing yesterday, big day out of Aiden Hutchinson, great young pass rusher for the Detroit Lions. Today, we didn't hear as much. We heard that he still got active, but not as much as yesterday. But, you know, when you're looking at this offensive line, this defensive line battle that they just had with Detroit, who are you looking at going into this preseason game on Friday? Because I'll tell you, I got my eyes on two guys, John Michael Schmitz, who I just mentioned, and number two, and I'll let you talk about him, Matt Peart. Matt Peart, interesting. Yeah, I mean, look, this is a guy who has an opportunity to actually, like, regain his spot on the roster. I mean, as far as I was concerned, going into this offseason, he was on his way out. You know what I mean? Like, multiple years, you know, ACL tear, really hasn't made an impact. But he's actually been pretty solid. I mean, he looked decent. So um, definitely interested to see Matt Peart. Matt per- and you know what? I don't expect most of the starters to play. Um, you know, I think the Lions, uh, Campbell said the same thing for the Lions. They don't, he's not going to use a lot of the starters because they got a lot of really good work in at the joint practices. So I wouldn't expect a lot of the Giants starters to play either. We're probably going to say a lot of Tyrod Taylor, some Tommy DeVito. We're going to see some Eric Gray, some of those backup offensive linemen, um, which is a good thing. You know, and also those receivers. Like there's a couple, those two spots maybe on the back end of this roster that receivers are going to be playing for. Colin Johnson. Go have a day, man. Go have a day, Colin Johnson. Cole Beasley, I don't even know if they need to see him. They kind of know what Cole Beasley can do. I don't even know if it's worth playing him. Um, but, you know, there's other players there that you can obviously go out and see what you got. Maybe you want to get Sterling Shepard a little bit of action because he hasn't played in the game in a long time. But um, here, here's something that we really didn't talk about. A lot of people are talking about the offense, right, the, the red zone drills and the touchdowns. How about the defense? Defense had a freaking day today. Defense had a really, really good day today, guys. They had three turnovers. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that Dane Belton literally just took the ball uh, from, the, from the Lions receiver, which is pretty damn impressive. I think it was David Montgomery. I think it was a running back, um, David Mon- Montgomery. So Dane Belton really chased him down and just literally just took it, just Ran out of his hands, took it right out away from him. Kind of rem- reminds me of a uh, that was it Daniel Jones and um was it who's the Jamal Adams and the Jets? Remember he just walked up to him and took the ball and ran it in for six. <laughs> that was not a fun memory, but that's basically what Dane Belton did uh, today to David Montgomery. So it was kind of funny. Um, and then what else happened today? Uh, Jamal Green, rookie cornerback, picked off uh, Lions quarterback in the end zone. So nice little nice little play there. I think Dane Belton actually got involved in another play. It says the third and final turnover came later during the team drills. It was tough to see who knocked the ball out of Montgomery's hands between Belton and outside locker Kayvon Thibodeau, but Thibodeau emerged from the pile with the ball in his hands. So that was really good. You know who continues to have really good practices? Safety Jason Pinnock. He had another really great coverage snap in the end zone. Bobby Okereke had a really good coverage snap today. Deontay Banks shut down Amon Ross St. Brown. That's really good. Like That's what we want to see. Um, Deontay Banks, we haven't heard a lot about him, which sometimes for a cornerback is a good thing. Like You don't want to hear a lot about a cornerback, so uh, maybe no news is good news, but when you do get news you want to hear that they cause an incompletion so it was good to see Dante Banks certainly getting involved there um Carter Coughlin forced an incompletion you know he's kind of on the outside looking in right now I'd say uh uh, Leonard Williams had a sack 
Cordell Flott had a sack, maybe out of the slot. Kind of interesting situation there. Probably out of the slot. You're not really usually rushing your boundary corners. Um, let's see, Jordan Riley, I don't know much about him, but he had a stop at the line of scrimmage. Adoree Jackson and Darnay Holmes combined to force an incompletion on a pass to Khalif Raymond. Um, so that was good. You know, Darnay Holmes seems to be actually having a pretty decent few days of practice. So maybe he is saving himself a little bit. Um, and maybe there is an opportunity for him there. I still think that they're going to ask him to take a pay cut because he is making like 2.2, 2.3 million dollars. I think they want to save that money. So, you know, wouldn't be surprised if they're like, hey, Darnay, like, we're going to cut you unless you take a million dollar pay cut like Darius Slayton did last year. Bet on yourself and try and, you know, kind of leverage that into a multi year deal. I think that ultimately is a, you know, I don't, I don't really know what the drop off is from Darnay to another player. I don't think it's extensive. Uh, what do you think about that? Like, right now, I mean, Darnay's coming off a couple good practices, but like, we've seen him. We know what he does. We know what he is. And he's not really a good coverage corner. So, you know, I, I, I'm on the I'm on the side of like I'm asking him to take a pay cut or like we're going to release you because I think you could find a similar level player. <laughs> okay, so yeah, maybe I think you'd have to take a look at the waiver wire when we get to the end of the preseason. But I'm going to quickly counter here, Alex, and say you know, okay, you want to roll with Cordell Flat as a starting slot, presumably, right? Okay, so you do that, but who's behind him in the slot? Like who's slot number two? Do you feel like you can comfortably say? Slot number two should be Zion Gilbert, because right now the Giants have three cornerbacks listed on their nickel um, on their unofficial depth chart. It goes one, Holmes, two, Flott, three, Gilbert. You feel comfortable with that drop off? Because for me personally, and I, I, well, I guess, you know, to be fair, Aaron Robinson, whenever he returns from the pup list, he's the guy there instead of Zion Gilbert. But man, I I remember, give me some flashbacks. I remember you being quite critical of Zion Gilbert on numerous occasions during the last regular season. I can't imagine that you're too excited about the idea of him stepping in there instead of Darnell. No, (laughs) No, why? Why Zion Gilbert? I mean, he was awful when he was on the field. I'd rather Nick McLeod. Like, I know they're kind of put him in that utility place, but, like, I'd rather see Nick McLeod. Maybe Bobby Zion, McCain. Or Bobby McCain. Bobby McCain's yeah. been looking good the last two days. Like, yeah. like come on. Like, miss you with Zion Gilbert. We also have Trey Hawkins. Like, stop. Stop. Well, Hawkins outside. Bobby McCain. Right. Slot. You know, safety mix. I don't know. Zion but Zion Gilbert though. was listed in the slot there on the unofficial depth chart. So, it's all, I thought it was worth bringing up his name. Um, to be fair, Bobby Not McCain, yes. Good practices here against the Lions. But when I was speaking to Patricia Trainer earlier this week, she mentioned that he was somebody whose stock had fallen significantly because he was really struggling at training camp when it was just the Giants practices. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's turning around. It's a long summer. You know, we've got three preseason, preseason games to go. Let's see how Bobby McCain plays. But that's pretty much what you say about all these guys, like Darday Holmes included. Yeah. Let me let me throw in a little thing here. I think that there are players, especially dude, Bob McCain's like 31, maybe. Like he's a veteran. Like he's been in the NFL for like eight years. I, I mean, some of the sometimes like you just don't need like he you know he doesn't need to go 100 percent at practice because he knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like uh, sometimes I I get it. Like he's struggling at practice. He's a veteran. I mean, he has more experience as Zion Gilbert. That's for sure. Uh, you know what I mean? Like. I'm not really holding much stock in like him, like not having a great couple days at practice. Um, that utility value is certainly there. Had a, had a good joint practice yesterday. I saw the pass in completion. It was really nice. Um, I see the value in Bobby. It's possible he doesn't make the roster. Like there's a hundred percent possibility that he they end up moving on from him. Um, but I don't think that there's like we have some upside guys like you got um trey hawkins like you have some good like jason pinnick and dane belton like you kind of need experience too like you can't all you can't just like have your whole depth like youngsters that have no experience like you need some guys that have nfl reps if you know what i mean no i do know what you mean and i agree with you um i think that there is a lot of veteran experience lying between the cracks on this Giants roster, but you're right. The majority of it is like these young, youthful guys with a lot of potential that needs developing, but they do need to have some of these veteran guys established in their secondary and their linebacker core as well for what it's worth, which is why they're maybe or maybe not now considering looking at Anthony Barr, but you know, just in general, you're right. The Giants, very young team. They need some veteran experience across the board, but I will say... I'm a little 50-50 on Bobby McCain. I don't know. I'm not as hyped up about him as you are, but we'll see. And I think that for what it's worth, Dane Belton can probably fill that utility role. Um, I actually really do trust him in that. I thought that he was pretty good as a rookie. And that that fumble that you mentioned, that forced fumble, was just sick. Um, but also, on that note, this is so off topic, but on the topic, this is what I need to stop happening in 2023. Every time a defensive back forces a fumble, I do not need to read, he's doing a Peanut Tillman impression. He's doing a Charles Tillman impression. Every single freaking time I see a defensive back force a fumble that is the caption 
every time without fail someone is commenting that on the twitter point i don't care it needs to stop we got to move on peanut tillman played a decade ago okay let's move on sorry guys quick rant there i'm a little bit annoyed today but let's move on now alex i want to get back to one point that you made about deontay banks because him going into these practices this was a real chance for him to to really sharpen his skills. Going up against some of these Lions receivers, maybe they're not the deepest unit in football, but they've got some damn good talent. I'm on Rob St. Brown being one of the best slot talents in the NFL. So hearing that Deontay Banks even got his hands on a pass intended for Amon Ross St. Brown, that's enough for me to get excited, to get real happy. So listen, we've seen some of these young cornerbacks that the Giants have drafted in re- recent years. Let's think about Eli Apple. Let's think about DeAndre Baker. All of these guys, if they were going up against a top wide receiver on another team, whether it's in practice or on the field, they were not getting their hands on the freaking football at least Deontay Banks is getting his hand on the football I think that does show a lot of progress it does show a lot of promise for the young rookie and again we're hearing good things about Trey Hawkins still as well those are to the probably the two players on the defense that I'm keeping the closest eye on in this upcoming Detroit preseason matchup I think the number one guy I'm keeping an eye on is Trey Hawkins but I'm also keeping a close eye on Deontay Banks but yeah there was a lot of standout players here Alex I heard Aziz Ojolari had a good rep Kayvon Thibodeau had a couple good reps um, I saw one Detroit Lions beat writers say that Kayvon Thibodeau was just blended in, didn't stand out. It was trying to trying to say that he was taking plays off almost. I don't know if you have a reaction to that. To me, I think it's nonsense, and it's just you know what? I will say this. I think that Kayvon Thibodeau gets a lot of really unnecessary flack from NFL media, and it doesn't make sense to me. I've never seen this guy take a playoff. In fact, we've seen him go from the right hash, chase down a running back all the way on the left sideline, 40 yards downfield. So I don't really understand where this narrative comes from, but Alex, I guess I'll let you give your thoughts on Thibodeau and you know anybody else I mentioned before we close um my thoughts on Thibodeau is like again why I I get like players that need that are fighting for roster spots you know like going balls to the wall but like Kayvon Thibodeau's not fighting for a roster spot like he is a starting player on this Giants defense why on earth would you ask him to go balls to the wall when you need him healthy you know what I mean? Like him getting hurt prior to the season starting, like don't risk it. Go go at 75%. Go at 60%. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like I don't care. You need to be healthy. Like work on some stuff that you were working on. You know, try, you know, see if you could get a couple. He had a good rep against Panay Sewell. I don't know if you saw that, but he, he got right into the pocket. Um, I, I don't really – whoever said that is – Again, why are we so – why are people so crazy for practices? Like, Kayvon Thibodeau is a starter on this defense. Like, why Why would he be going 100% in a joint practice four weeks away from the start of the season? Like, do you, are you, you're asking to get hurt. You're asking to get injured. You know what I mean? Like, you – in the NFL, like, you know, I'd say in most other sports, like, you can practice how you play. Like, if you're playing baseball, like, yes, you're going to try and hit the ball. You know what I mean? Like, the, the probability of injury is a lot lower. Um, in basketball, probability of injury is a lot lower. You're, you're scrimmaging. You're doing – but if you're football and you're going 1v1 and you're doing this and that, and from what I, from what I saw, it looks like he, it looked like Kayvon Thibodeau was putting in enough effort. It didn't look like he was taking plays off. But, like, you know, if you're, if you're I don't know, like, you don't need to go 100% every single play if you know your, your spot is 100% secured and you're trying to stay healthy. You know what I mean? Like, again, nonsense. I, I, the storylines that people come up with blow my mind. The lack of logic sometimes, like, makes my the gears in my brain just skip a freaking beat. I don't understand it. I don't get it. And then, of course, like, Dale Jones bounces back today and has a great practice. And, like, suddenly no one cares about yesterday. Like, just make it make sense sometimes. Like, God, it's, it's just insufferable. Um, but that's why we're here, to, to give you guys the, the truth about it. It's just absolute bullshit. Um, and, and you definitely, when you're coming here, when you, when you come to the Fireside Giants podcast, you're getting the truth, obviously. So right now, um, you know, my, and what you said before about me, like, overly hyped about Bobby McCain. I'm not, like, excited about Bobby McCain. I'm just saying. Like, he's freaking, this is like Bobby McCain. Like, he's a backup cornerback. Like, I, <laughs> I like the experience variable there, but it's not like he's, like, this, like, outstanding player that's going to change the course of our defense. Like, he's fine. He's a, he's a good player to have, good utility piece. He's a knockoff Julian Love. That's the way I've been describing him. Um, you know, he's a poor man's Julian Love. Julian Love gets a $6 million deal. Bobby McCain gets a $1 million deal. You tell me who's the better player. So I feel like, you know, right now we're looking at, a, you know, a player at, at the very least can step in, play play strong safety can play cornerback and play slot cornerback and play free safety it's good to have a utility piece like that you know what i mean um so i don't i see the value there that's all uh but anybody else that i think comes to mind i mean i really like to see deontay banks having a good day that was really nice i actually just saw the clip of him um it was really solid so you could go out check it out on our instagram i posted it there so um, that's definitely um, a nice clip from him but altogether the giants look good today man they won today's practice 
Um, they looked solid. They looked streamlined, efficient, productive. Uh, it was everything you wanted to see ahead of the first preseason game. You know what I mean? Now, now we just light our, or we light our candles, my friends, and we hope to God that everyone stays healthy. That is what we're hoping for because we have seen the Giants have really promising seasons very early on and injuries can derail it. We all know that as Giants fans. So hopefully they do stay healthy. Again, that kind of ties into your point with Thibodeau. He doesn't need to go 100% on every single practice rep. He's not out here to impress Detroit Lions beat writers. He is out here to improve his game in football and also keep his body healthy for the regular season. So I think you made a good point there, Alex. But one last player that I will mention, Ben Bredesen had another good practice, apparently, as he just continues to have good practices, definitely establishing himself as a starter on the Giants offensive line, whether it's at left guard or right guard to be determined, likely left guard, but we will see. Um, I did see yesterday, Alex, before we wrap, I got to mention this. I I saw this clip of Shane Lemieux, and I wanted to claw... I don't know if you saw the clip. Dude, I saw the okay. clip. You, I saw the okay. Clip. I gotta I gotta like make a reference oh, here. His best Casper impression. She's <laughs> That's a good one. You know you know the meme where the guy is um he's at like TSA or whatever, it's like security and he just It's a soccer <laughs> game and he's just like he's yes. just like barely doing anything. Yes, he just I know like that barely one. touches him. That was Shane Lemieux on that clip. Like, I watched that, and I was like, that's that's the meme. Okay. We have been on the get Shane Lemieux off this roster chain for a long time. I mean, like, yeah. he is – he I haven't heard a single good thing about him in, like, three years. Yeah. I don't understand it. Like, I mean, the injuries. Like, he steps on the football field and immediately gets hurt again. Like, it's almost like yeah. – like, rinse, wash, repeat. Please, keep this man off the field. Like, he's going to get hurt. Like, just Josh Zudu, Ben Bredesen, those are my guys at left guard. That, yep. Not even looking – not even thinking twice about it. Yep. Yeah, I just I had to mention it. Came to mind. It was one of the most bewildering things that I've seen from a Giants practice in a long time. But other than that, I'm feeling pretty positive about a lot of these left guards, right guards, centers on the Giants right now, which I haven't been able to say for a long time. So, you know, overall feeling positive, feeling happy. Good Giants day of practice. And um, I hit some pretty good balls today at the driving range. So I'm happy. So let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Make sure to leave a like if you did. Enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and Follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants and tune into the live stream tonight at 8 p.m., which is going to be like minutes after this gets posted at this point. But tune in, Ali and I recapping the practices and talking about the upcoming preseason game. So without further ado, we will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one and let's go Giants.